Last time on How To, I showed you how to set up your scope to capture your very first waveform. And the test I shared was just a simple battery test, the same kind I've shared many times, but using a digital voltmeter instead. Let's review that test first. Select DC volts, and place the red meter lead in the input marked volts and the black meter lead into the input marked COM. If your meter has an auto range feature, adjust the scale to show volts to two decimal places. Connect the meter to the vehicle's battery. Set up the meter to record the minimum voltage it sees and the maximum voltage it sees using the record or min-max function. Now if your voltmeter reads more than 12.4 volts, you're okay to continue with the test. But if it reads less than that, you should charge the battery before you continue. And if it reads 10.5 volts or less, well, don't even bother. There's a dead cell, at least one, in the battery, and it needs to be replaced. Let's compare that to the waveform we captured the last time we were together. On the waveform, we can use the rulers on the scope to more accurately measure the voltage it saw. The same voltage is measured as soon as we connected the battery to the scope. Now we start the car and let it run for a few minutes, just as we did with the scope connected. Now let's take a look at the maximum reading recorded by the meter. In this case, 14.32 volts. What's our scope reporting? We can use the cursors to find out. And it's reading about the same, 14.4 volts. This is charging voltage, and it should generally run between 13.5 and 14.5 volts. But if you see something outside of this range, don't condemn anything quite yet. Many OEMs use very unique charging profiles in the ECM to maximize battery efficiency while reducing the load on the engine and the alternator. So make sure that you check the OE service information to see what they say is correct for their vehicle. And one thing you can't see on your meter that you will see on the scope is how long it took for the battery to recover from the starting event. You know, if it takes too long for the battery to recover, it could indicate either a problem in the charging system or more likely a sulfated cell in the battery. And again, some further testing is required. The minimum reading is 9.74 volts. This is the equivalent of a loaded voltage test on the battery using the starter to create the load. The battery voltage drops below 9.6 volts, the battery is suspect and should be removed for the car and tested more thoroughly. On the scope, it's 8.72 volts. Why is that so much lower than what the voltmeter read? The difference is in how fast the two tools can sample the input they're connected to. Even a good digital voltmeter is only going to be able to sample somewhere around 400 to 500 samples per second. But most scopes can beat that by a thousand times or more. And because of the high sample rate of the scope, we're able to capture that microsecond moment where the starter is just beginning to turn and overcome the inertia of the engine. Because of this, when you make this test with your scope, the lowest you want to see the voltage go to is about 8.5. Anything lower than that, and again, you'll remove the battery and perform a more thorough test. Is that it? Well, if it were, I'm really not making a great case for the scope, am I? No, there's a whole lot more to see in that simple waveform. And that's the topic for our next how-to, available January 7th. Until then, here's wishing you all a very merry holiday season, and thanks for watching.